here on the Vibe Network, Brad Cohn here, the V of the T. In the press box today, kind of rare, because we usually are out on the broadcast porch because the weather's so good and it's beautiful here. Not today. It's about 6 degrees, and the wind's coming out of the north at about 472 miles an hour, and we are inside the press box where there is a heater running. Thank you for sticking around and enjoying, and enjoying that. Cedar Park 4-2 winner in game one today. They'll turn right around right now and play the same team, the Lubbock Cooper Pirates, here in a second game. That'll be it for today. Two more scheduled tomorrow, but Mother Nature has scheduled rain all day, too, so I don't know if we'll actually get those games in. We'll certainly get this one in. Temperature has risen to 34. It was 28 when the last one started. So we got a warm front coming. We're going to look at the starting lineups here. First for Cooper, visitors, batting at the top of the innings. Leading off center fielder Kyle Lewis, batting second, playing second, Ethan Guerrero. Batting third, the DH, Kyler Jordan. Cleanup hitter is left fielder Cutter Douglas. Batting fifth at short is Jude Cook. Batting sixth in right, Kyler Galmore. Batting seventh at third base, Tim Haynes. And batting eighth, first baseman Bryce LeBlanc. Only real new player in the lineup besides pitcher. And batting ninth behind the plate, Michael Smosna. So for your own score sheet at home, it's Lewis Guerrero Jordan, Douglas Cook Galmore, Haynes, LeBlanc, Smosna, and on the mound, number eight, Caden Klein. For Cedar Park, leading off in left field is Houston Molinaro. Batting second, playing second, Ian Garcia. Batting third, playing short, Julian Swift. Batting fourth, the catcher, Louis Alonzo. Batting fifth, in right, Cade Davis. Batting sixth, first baseman, Jackson Harvey. Batting seventh, the DH, Murray Robinson. Big Burr! Batting eighth, the center fielder, Christian Pickens. And batting ninth, third baseman, Ethan Becker. And on the mound, Quint Mullen throw for Cedar Park here in game two. So for your scorecards, Molinaro, Garcia, Swift, Alonzo, Davis, Harvey, Robinson, Pickens, Becker. Film girls have moved inside with us. Too cold out there for them or their equipment. I was just talking about you that you moved in here with us. We'll be getting underway in just a moment, as you can see. Umpire meeting going on. I moved the camera just a little bit because we couldn't quite get third base in where we had it situated about eight inches farther to the left for game one. Normally, when we set up on the porch, I can get first in but not third. But you can see, you know, ground plays, throws over to first, that sort of thing. You can see all that. But we're back probably 15, 16 feet from that location. Camera a little bit farther away, feel a little bit smaller in aspect ratio, so the width of the screen actually encompasses both third and first base at the edges of the screen, and you can see the whole infield when we set up in here. Of course, like I said, this doesn't happen very often. Uh, drizzly weather that uh, the baseball game can still be played in will come up here. Cold weather will come up here, but other than that, we set up out on the porch usually. Breathe the fresh air and try not to crowd in the press box staff as much as I am right now. The There's Quint Mullen warming up on the mound. On the mound Quint Mullen. We got two sponsors that we kind of know of. ASI Protection Services. With ASI Protection Services, it's always safe. It's that simple. ASI Services provides commercial and residential alarm monitoring services. ASI does the install and monitoring for way less than the large security chains. They've been in business for 21 years. ASI also offers home automation services, repair services for access control, alarms, and CCTV, plus security camera installation and repair. That's ASI Protection Services. Call 512-467-2615. Another sponsor that we know for sure is Owlzer's Barbecue. I'll talk, I'll talk to you about them between innings, but we're still looking to solidify the other sponsors and put together some slickly produced commercial spots we can play between innings. Quint Mullen, a righty, as you can see, warming up now. And since I don't have to do anything else right now, I'll zoom up on, zoom up on him a little bit so you can see some of his throwing motion. There we go. Watch Quint throw for a second. And there's a throw down, so <laughs> you get to see one throw up close. We'll back up and encompass the whole field and get ready to play. 
Here is Pirates center fielder Kyle Lewis. Again, that was a pretty prestigious win. They were 31-8 and eight last year in the undefeated champions of District 4-5A. So they are not used to coming up behind. My thermometer now, guys, is 37 degrees. So why'd you come in here, man? It's a balmy day out there now. Here's Lewis. Swung on the first pitch and sends it to center field. Back goes Christian Pickens underneath it for the out. One pitch, one away. Second base in Ethan Guerrero. Last game he struck out swinging, grounded out to Richardson at second, and lined out to Pickens in center. First pitch called strike. Both batters starting out 0-1 now against Quint Mullen. The 0-1. Swung on, high bouncer to third base. On the grass and over for the out. Ethan Becker to Jackson Harvey. Two down on three pitches. We thought the last game was a fast one. If this one keeps up, we'll be out of here in no time. D.H. Kyler Jordan to the plate. The last game he struck out, singled up the middle and was stranded first, and then struck out again. There's a call strike. This umpire wants to get out of here, too. Four pitches from Mullen. No called balls yet. Of course, now that I say that, this one will be one. Nope, swings. Missed that one by a mile. 0 oh and 2. Three up, three down with three strikeouts in the first game. No strikeouts yet, but two up, two down. Rock and fire from Quentin Mullen, swung on, lifted towards right. Tracking it, underneath it, fighting the wind, making the catch, Cade Davis. Every pitch was a strike. Three up, three down. We'll be right back after this. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's a one-of-a-kind authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulents. That's Alzer's Barbecue. They are no longer next to the Shell Station on 1431, just east of Lakeline, where they've been for a number of years. they got a new brick-and-mortar shop now. It's the old Putai restaurant. Any business that's a restaurant that goes out of business and has the word poo in it, I can tell you why. It's just behind the CVS at Bell and Lake Line. I've been there. I was lucky enough to be invited there on opening day. It is still outstanding barbecue. you got to go there. Alzer's Barbecue, just behind the CVS at Bell and Lake Line. Bottom of the first we go, top of the order. Left fielder Houston Malinaro will lead off. Followed by second baseman Ian Garcia, shortstop Julian Swift. Then maybe, how about like six more guys? Waiting off for the Cedar Park Timberwolves, left fielder. Notice Coach Williams, Williams is wearing thick gloves. So is, uh, you know, so is Mike Cockrell coaching first. Here's Molinaro. Game one today. Houston grounded out to uh, second, rather. Reached on a fielder's choice and got an RBI on that play, but was stranded in second, then struck out looking. Left hitter, and he throws behind him. It went outside of the outer stripe of the left-handed batter's box. That should make it 2-0, not 1-0. That pitch was a ball enough to be called twice. Slap foul out of play right side, 1-1 one -one to Molinaro.
one one shows bunt bunts it towards third it was bunted hard though and the third baseman was able to get to it quick enough to make the out just a little bit too much velocity should have deadened the bat a little bit more on that one goes down as a five three so one down for austin garcia the Besides Quentin Mullen, the only new player in the lineup from game one, playing second base, batting second. Right-handed hitter. Takes the first one outside, ball one. There's a strike. Swift on deck, Alonzo in the hole if we get to him. Swing and a miss. Now this pitcher throws with some pace. Will Quelia, the first guy, is about 30 seconds between pitches. On the ground towards second. Gathers it in and over for the out. Two down. Ethan Guero to Bryce LeBlanc, the only new player in the lineup besides the pitcher. For Cooper. Two outs, nobody on. Shortstop to the plate, Julian Swift. Pitch, foul tipped it, strike one. Swift in game one today, grounded out to third, grounded out to short, and grounded back to the pitcher. Hadn't hit it out of the infield yet. Good hitter, hits for power as well in the three spot. Swing and a miss there. So he's due. 0 and 2 with two outs, nobody on. Inside, oh, it hit him. So inside, it hit him. Fourth hit batsman of the day. Two for each team. Now batting number 19, catcher Louis Alonso. And that will bring to the plate Timberwolves catcher Louis Alonzo. Game one today, Louis flied out to left, was a hit batsman and caught stealing second. And on with an E5 and forced out at second. Louis a better hitter than that, too. We got two really good hitters in the three and four spots in Swift and Alonzo that are hitless today. 0 for 7 at the moment. Outside, 2 and 0 now to Louis. Again outside, 3 and 0. Get him on somehow. Now, Grace, you're not doing anything. You just turn that thing on and point in the right direction, and that's it. That's an easy job. Lifted, left or right side foul. Can't get to it. The right fielder Kyler Gallimore chasing it. So three and one to Alonzo. Well, something like that lands fair. Swift might score. Here he goes from first on the ground, right in the spot. The second baseman vacated, so Julian stumbles a little go around second, but had enough of a jump. He goes first and third on the play. The hit and run executed successfully, a single for Louis Alonzo. Now batting for your senior partner, number one, right Five hole leader now, right fielder Cade Davis. Davis. Davis three for four last night, or excuse me, Monday night, one for three today. Four for seven on the year. Two ounce runners at the corners for Davis. Well, it'd be great to get Swift in. On the ground, past the first baseman, and that'll do it. Julian comes in, and going from first towards third, the throw will not catch him. Great head first slide for Louis Alonzo. So an RBI single to the right side for Cade Davis. Fifth hit of the now year. He's only played in a little more than two games. Alonzo first to third. Swift scores. One nothing. Still two outs. Jackson Harvey, the first baseman to the plate. Let me update your scoreboard. There you go. Found that one. 
going on to Jackson. So it'll already be the 18th pitch of the inning and the game for Cooper's Caden Klein. Misses. One or one. Jackson Harvey in game one, an RBI double just inside the first base line and later scored and grounded out twice, once to second base and once to third base. Excuse me, once to first base. That one inside, two and one. Called strike two. Hayden Klein, a strikeout away from getting out of a pretty good sized jam. He's only given up one run so far. He put that guy aboard by plunking him, Julian Swift. The runner's going, and he's got a big enough. Oh, we should have kept going. Could have picked him off. Oh, I think they were trying to lull him into action so that we could have gone from third. They just kind of bungled that play. Davis starts out from first, has a big enough lead when the pitcher goes to first. He could have easily kept going and gotten into second. But he was trying to lull them into a rundown action so that Alonzo could go from third. Alonzo never moved. So the inning's over. Harvey will be back at the plate. He'll get to restart his 2-2 count in the second. We'll be back in a moment. one nothing Cedar Park after one complete. All right, back to the action now here from Matt Ariano Park, Jay Severe Field. We'll go to the top of the second inning up one nothing. Four, five, six, doing the order for the Cooper Pirates. Appling Cooper is in their district. Cooper v. Cooper a couple of times a year in many sports. Here's left fielder Cutter Douglas. Oh, look at that. Looks like he's going to hit him in the shoulder and drop down and curve back over. Caught the inside of the plate for a called strike one. What a pitch by Quint Mullen. Douglas in the first game got hit twice. He was wanting one right there, I guess. He struck out the other time he was up. This one is sent to left center. Back they go. Back they go. And is it out of here? It is gone. The second home run in about an hour. Ties it up. Cutter Douglas. Almost the same spot as the last one. Got caught up in the same wind as the last one, that's for sure. That's the first hit of the game. First run of the game. First base runner of the game for them. Jude Cook, the shortstop. We are tied 1-1. Let me update your scoreboard. Tied in. 1-0 to Cook. First game today, Cook lined out to left, fouled out to the first baseman, and lined out to left again. He's not been on base yet. No, he is now. There's a C&I single between third and short. So three up, three down the first inning. Two for two here in the second with a run in. Right fielder Kyler Galmore to the plate. Galmore in game one. 
Matt in the eight hole. He's hitting six in this one. Struck out, walked, and he hit a home run. Boy, I hope he uh, doesn't do that again. Big fella. Hits it the same direction, but it's a line drive. Be cut off in left center by the left fielder and sent back in. Houston Molinaro does that job. But that does move Jude Cook to second. Three hits in a row to open the second. Now batting number 17, Tim Haynes. Tim Haynes, third baseman in this game. The DH last time grounded into a 4 6 3 double play, grounded out to third and popped out to left field. Called strike one. Go ahead, run in scoring position at second base. No outs. Cedar Park in a little bit of trouble in the field for the first time today. Called strike. Maybe the first time this year, Elgin never really gave him too much trouble. 0-2. Oh Long look at second by Mullen. This is a line drive right at the shortstop. Can they get him in time? They did! Outstanding defensive play. Julian Swift grabs it out of the air. Immediately fires it to Ian Garcia on the bag to double up Jude Cook. So now, two down. Now batting the first baseman, Bryce LeBlanc. Bryce LeBlanc, eight-hole hitter, first baseman, steps in. Go ahead, run still aboard, but back at first base with two outs. LeBlanc, a left-handed hitter. First one's a strike. I look over at first by Mullen. The pitch a little short. They're going to go down to first. Alonzo does. Makes Galmore dive back in, but one and one the count to Bryce LeBlanc. Michael Smosna, the catcher, is on deck. He's the nine-hole hitter. Lights are on here at Matt Ariano Park. Second throw over there. They never got past six in the last game. That one fastball stays outside two and one. Pace slows quite a bit with Mullen with people on board. This one a bouncer to first over to get it. It's Harvey and back to the bag and the out is made. So the first guy leads off. Second pitch of the inning with a solo home run. It's a couple other singles. But nothing else happens for him on the scoreboard. We're through one and a half, tied at one. We'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back to the action here on the campus of Cedar Park High School, Cedar Park, Texas. Usually the weather's beautiful here, but today it sucks. Cedar Park in the bottom of the second now. Jackson Harvey takes the first pitch to left field. Fighting the wind, but making the catch is Cutter Douglas. One pitch, one out. That one got high, but didn't get the benefit of the carry of the wind that theirs did. So one down. For Big Murr. Murray Robinson, the DH today. Normally he eats quarterbacks. Let's see if he can eat pitchers. 1-0 the count of Big Murr. I want a strike. Is it 2-1? and one? Did I miss a pitch? Now back to the screen. Two strikes on Murray. Christian Pickens, center fielder, is up next. And then Ethan Becker. One out here, nobody on. Tied at one in the bottom of the second. And we left guys at the corners in the last one, or left a guy at third, rather. Another foul back to the screen. Still 1-2 to Murray Robinson. Murray gets under one, sends it into the outfield. Over to his right, the center fielder and the left fielder. Left field, making the catch, Kyle Lewis, so two up, two down. Here's the center fielder, Christian Pickens. First game day, walked and scored. Singled and was stranded second and struck out swinging. Murray did not play in game one. There's a strike. Ethan Becker on deck. I guess the lights are helping a little bit. The field does look a little bit brighter. Fouled in the plate area, 0-2 to Pickens. We just need to get a run, and then everybody else in the game just gets out quickly. We can be out of the cold. O2 lined into the net still O2 Caden Klein a strike away from having a perfect inning And there it is Pickens down, swinging. One, two, three, goes the Timberwolves here in the bottom of the second, still tied at one with two complete. We'll be back. Welcome back. Looking at pitch counts through two complete. Our guy Quinn Mullins thrown 18 pitches, 15 strikes, three balls. There's his thrown 30, 21 strikes, nine balls. 
One, two, three, four, five of eight Cedar Park batters have started out 0-1 against Caden Klein. All of theirs except one has started 0-1 against Quint Mullen. Bottom of the order in the top of the third for the Cooper Pirates. Here's nine-hitter catcher Michael Smosna. Smosna one for three in the previous game. Called strike. Wow, I take that and it looked a little high to me. He flied out to right the two times that he did not single to left. That was a better pitcher than the first one. So we're at one and one, and that seems logical. Outside edge, one and two. More people in the park than I would have thought today. Swing and a miss, and a strikeout for Quint Mullen, his first. One down, and we go back to the top of the order for the Pirates. Center fielder Kyle Lewis flied out to center the first time up on the first pitch of the game. Oh, look at that. That was a nasty pitch called strike one. A little more speed on that one, but must have stayed high, 101. There's a nice one that the umpire must have closed his eyes on. Two and one. Swing and fouled it in the plate area. Two, two. Wind still blowing out. The flag isn't snapping quite as hard as it was through most of the first game. Blowing out to left. Lifted foul, right side, probably going to make, well, oh, wait a minute. The wind blows it back into a playable position, and first baseman Jackson Harvey camps under it, two down. Nice job. That left the bat and got to the apex of it. It looked like it was clearly going to go over the dugout area, and then it just stopped and dropped straight down. Ryan to Harvey's mitt. Ethan Guerrero, second baseman. Grounded out to third first time up. Oh, and that plunked him. Fifth hit batsman of the game, but it's early in the season and it's cold. Three of theirs hit today and two of ours. So Kyler Jordan, three-hole hitting DH, steps to the plate. Flight out to right. And Cade Davis, first time up. First pitch misses to Kyler Jordan, 1-0. Almost hit him with that one, way inside, 2-0. Left fielder Cutter Douglas, who hit a home run a few minutes ago, is on deck. Need to get the third out here.
outside. 3-0. and Don't want to put two on for a guy who's got the taste the blood of a home run in his mouth. On the ground between third and short and into left. So that's the situation we have. Guerrero is pushed to second. Jordan's aboard with that single to left. Cutter Douglas comes up with two men on. There are two outs. We can end the inning. There's a ground ball in the infield just going to the nearest base. Or Cutter Douglas can get under another one, and we're in trouble. Wow, what a bender that one was, called strike one. That was a wicked pitch. You swing at it, it, it hits your forearm and you break a bone. But it is called a strike. Oh, one. Oh, another nice one. Oh, two. No fastballs here. Wicked bender again. Stayed inside this time. One and two. Checks the runner at second. Ground ball. High hopper to third. Grabs it and on the bag for the force out. And the inning's over with no damage done. We we have a couple of base runners on a hit batsman and a single, but they're both stranded, and we are through two and a half, or excuse me, yeah, two and a half, I was right. <laughs> Still tied at one. We'll be right back. Now into the bottom of the third inning, bottom of the order. 9-1-2 due for Cedar Park. Here's Ethan Becker, the third baseman. High and inside for a called strike. Molinaro, top of the order, is on deck, and then Ian Garcia. That one's outside, 1-1. One Tapper towards third, fair, onto the grass, over to first. Good scoop by the first baseman. That was Ethan, excuse me, that was Tim Haynes playing third for Old Gibson over to Bryce LeBlanc. The 5-3, so one down for top of the order, left fielder Houston Molinaro. Molinaro grounds it foul to the right side. 
Ian Garcia on deck, Julian Swift in the hole. Swing and a miss. 0-2 to Houston Molinaro Sauce. One misses. One, two to Houston. Four hits in a run for Cooper here. Two hits in a run for Cedar Park. One, two, the count to Houston Molinaro. Again, two games scheduled tomorrow in this same tournament. Grounded foul, right side, still one and two. But who knows if we'll get to play in. The forecast calls for steady rain most of the day. They would be right back here. We'd end up getting four home games in this tournament. But it might only be two. On the ground in the hole between first and second in the left field. Molinaro reaches. One out single to right. Third hit of the game for Cedar Park. Austin Garcia. Austin Garcia playing second in this game. Steps to the plate, grounded out two second last time up. Fouled back to the net, 0-1. Still waiting the 0-1 here. Molinaro at first, one out. They're going to throw over. That's the third, I think. No, first of this game. We've thrown twice already. Long wait by the pitcher. And he'll go to first again. That's twice. Three times. Getting close to the Magic 7. Those of you who may not have seen the broadcast this morning I've pointed out a national high school baseball stat I read a couple of years ago that we've tracked since. Called strike. 0 and 2 to Austin Garcia. It says that for any high school pitcher, one out of every seven times he throws to a base at a runner, he throws it away. And we've been tracking it for a few years, and that is definitely true. This one on the ground towards first. Scoops it and hits the bag for that force out. It was like a sacrifice ground out. 3U for Garcia, but it pushes Molinaro to second with two outs. Here's Swift. Hit Batsman and scored our only run the first time up. Back through the middle, shortstop gets it behind second, throws to first, in time. 6-3, down goes Julian. Cedar Park strands a base runner, there's a hit, no errors, one man left aboard through three complete, still tied at one. We'll be back in a minute. Pitch counts now through three complete innings. 
Our guy, Quint Mullins, from 35 pitches, 24 strikes, 11 balls, greater than a 2 to 1 strike to ball ratio. Their guy's from 42 pitches, but a 3 to 1 strike to ball ratio, 31 to 11. Both have given up one run. Mullins given up four hits. Klein's given up three. Both have hit a batter. So we'll go to the top of the fourth now. Five, six, and seven do in the Pirates order. Shortstop Jude Cook will lead off. Then right fielder Kyler Galmore and third baseman Tim Haynes. Cook singled through the left side on the ground last time, but then was forced out at second base. Ooh, that's a nice pitch. 0-1. Seems a ball with some nasty movement on it from Quinn Mullen. Another one stayed a little too low there. <sighs> Another one to the same spot in deep left center. Off the wall that time. We thought that was gone when it was hit. Same spot between the Scoreboard, the right edge of the scoreboard as we see it, and that left center field light tower. Now batting right fielder Kyler Gelman. Stand up double for Jude Cook. He is two for two in this game. Fifth hit for Lubbock Cooper. Here's right fielder Kyler Galmore, singled to the left side last time up. Middle of their order doing some damage in this game. There are three, four, five, and six hitters are five for six in this game. Nobody else has a hit. Nobody else has reached base. The pitch misses one and zero to Kyler Galmore. That one misses. 2-0 to Galmore. And once again, we apologize for all you can hear is my voice droning on. You do have the picture, but uh, the broadcast misses something without the ambient sounds of the ballpark. People, gloves popping, wind blowing, people cheering and talking. Umpires yelling, and all that stuff. I know you missed that. We uh, can't really do that inside the press box. We used to be able to when the windows would open. We could hang a mic out if we were in the press box. But this is actually a bigger, nicer window, but it's permanently closed. Here comes a 3-0, and it's a strike. Once we start setting up back out on the porch, you'll get all the sounds as well. The 3-1 from Quint Mullen. And walks him. So a double and a walk to lead off the fourth here. Mullen dug a hole for himself in the second with the first three guys getting on with hits. Was lucky to get out of that with only one run allowed. Nothing across yet, but there are no outs. Runners at first and second, and coaches can come out and talk about it. That's Mike Cockrell, the pitching coach. Of course, that's why I'm not a pitching coach, but I can't imagine what you'd say. You know, uh, things aren't going well. Uh, throw strikes. I mean, what, I mean, what can you say? I don't know what you, what you would say to a guy. Um... Get the strike zone more often, or something. I don't know. Again, that's why I'm not a pitching coach. Here's Tim Haynes, the third baseman, lined out 
to Julian at short. Bunts, plate area, fair, off the mound as the pitcher goes to first. And the first baseman muffed the catch. It goes through the glove. They had him in time, so the bases are loaded with no outs. Cook at third, Galmore at second, Haynes at first on the E3. Now batting first baseman, Bryce LeBlanc. Bryce LeBlanc, first baseman, steps in, grounded out to Julian Swift at first. Um, Julian Swift at short the first time up. Swing and a miss. Probably will see the infield play in with no outs and bases loaded to try to cut off a run at the play, but they're not for some reason. They look pretty much standard. There's a called strike, too. Boy, a strike out here would be huge. Then you could might get somebody to bounce into a DP to clean up the inning after that. 0-2 pitch to Bryce LeBlanc from Quinn Mullen. And there's the 0-3. We got what we wanted right there. Strikeout, second of the game for Mullen. Now batting catcher Michael Smosna. So now if we get Michael Smosna, the catcher, who struck out swinging the first time up, to either strike out again or have a one-hopper, say, at short or at second, get out of this inning. That one misses, 1-0. and oh. Popped up in the infield. Infield fly rule, arm goes up. Shortstop Swift makes the catch pretty much right at the spot he originally standed. He moved back about three steps and came back those three steps. Caught it right where he was standing in the first place. Now we just need to get the batter. Top of the order for Kyle Lewis. Flied out to center and fouled out to the first baseman. Either of those will happen. We'll be happy again. There's a line drive, though, to center. It's going to come down and score at least one. Throws come in and being cut off. 3-1 Cooper. Cook scores from third. Galmore scores from second. Two RBI single into left center for Kyle Lewis, who was hitless on the day until that moment. 0 oh, and Tim Haynes moved first to third. Ethan Guerrero, second baseman. He's a hit batsman and thrown out, or forced out at third, rather, and then also grounded out at third. Pitch outside, catcher indifference, and the runner takes second, Lewis. Means we've got to go all the way across the diamond for the ending inning out. Pitch was a ball to Guerrero, 1 0. This one sent over the shortstop's head. Another run will score, and a second run will score. Another two RBI single to left, almost the same spot. Wheels are coming off for the Timberwolves as Haynes scores from third, Lewis from second. Now down five to one. Tyler Jordan, the DH, singled last time, flied out to right the time before. Back into the net, 0-1. Eighth batter of the inning. A double, a walk, an E3. Two singles, two runs. Oh, excuse me, five runs. No, four runs. I can't count my own handwriting. That one gets to the catcher and the runner will move up. Well, this has been a disaster of an inning for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. One on one the count. Those happen sometimes. It's a long season. You're going to have some disastrous innings now and then. Good thing is, this is early. You're just trying to kind of work on the team. Defeats here don't count on your district record or in the playoffs. Swing and a miss. 1-2 to Kyler Jordan. Far and away the most successful offensive inning of the day for the Cooper Pockets. Eight hitters. Four runs. And a strikeout to end it. 
But again, not before. They did send eight and score four. There's one, two, three hits, one of them a double. There's a walk, there's an E3, lots of base runners, and most of them scored. We'll be right back after this. Twenty-one pitches in that inning for Quint Mullen facing eight batters. Thirteen strikes and eight balls overall in the game so far. Mullen is at 56 pitches through four with 37 strikes, 19 balls. Pretty close to a two-to-one strike to ball ratio. Bottom of the fourth now. Cedar Park at four, five, and six in the order. Louis Alonzo the catcher. And a miss. Wow. Swing and a miss, strike one. Thought somebody was breaking into the press box. Alonzo singled up the middle but was stranded at third the first time up. Part of a first inning that we, uh, we had a lot of action going on but only scored one run in it. May come back to bite us. Foul back to the net. Still 0-2 to Louie. Cade Davis is on deck. Jackson Harvey in the hole. Swung on him, popped up in the infield. The second baseman appears to be calling for it. And makes the catch, Ethan Guerrero. One down. Cade Davis, right fielder. One for one in this game. He's got at least one hit in every game this year. All three of them. Five hits overall. And eight trips to the plate. Called strike one. Fouled, pushed to the left side, 0-2. It looked like he was trying to stop that swing and hit the ball anyway. Foul, same spot to the left side. Still 0-2. Check swing foul again to the left side. Still 0-2. Can't wait to get home tonight. The wife and I are going to Dos Salsas. It's a Mexican food tonight. We stayed a little high on that one. One and two. Check swing fair this time. Third baseman grabs it. Plenty of time for the throw, but it's high. An E5, and Cade is there. But he was pretty darn close to legging that out anyway. That's why the throw got wild, I think. You have to give him error on the throw there. Here's the first baseman, Jackson Harvey. Had a 2-2 at bat that was aborted in the first inning when somebody else got out. Came to bat in the second and flied out to left. A little high on that one, 2 1 and 0. One out, Davis at first, down by four runs now here in the bottom of the fourth. Driven to right but comes on and makes the catch and 
Tyler Galmore. Davis has to scoop back to first. Two down. Well hit just at Galmore. L9. Big Murr. Robinson flied out to center the first time up. That was his first at-bat of the season. This one gets to the catcher, and Davis will get second. 1-0 to Robinson. Yeah, I'm not sure what I want to order at Dos Salsas tonight. they got a lot of different plates that I like. On the ground to second. Down on it and over to the bag. Ethan Garrow to Bryce LeBlanc for the out. Cedar Park out of the inning. Still down. 5-1. to one. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, Brad Cohn back here in the press box at Che Severe Field, Matt Ariano Park, campus of Cedar Park High School. Defending district champion Cedar Park Timberwolves won their sixth district title in program history last year. But first in a few years, first in about six years. Trailing the Lubbock Cooper Pirates 5-1 to one here as we go the Pirates Part of the fifth, and this one's lifted high, but not too deep to left. Molinaro loses his hat, but not the ball. One pitch, one out. Five-hole hitter shortstop Jude Cook. Haven't gotten him out in this game. Two for two. Single to the left side and a double to deep left. Scored a run after the double. Was thrown out trying to take second on a different play in the first time at. And Coach Williams coming out to talk. Let me shut my mic off and just let you watch. Actually, I'm going to zoom up on the conversation for you so you can see him a little closer. Nope, oh, nope, oh, conversation's over. Never mind on that. Coach Williams back to the dugout. I'm going to stand up to try to change the mojo. I think I sat down when they started scoring. So here's Cook. Two for two on the game. First game 0 for 3. So Cook likes Mullen a lot better than he liked Vaughn. Check swing, fouled it, 0-1. Oh one. one out, top of the fifth. Do your scoreboard for you. Another called strike. 0-2 oh, to Jude Cook. Cool. 
Oh, swing and a miss. I guess they say he tipped it. That was a great 0-2 pitch. Started over the plate to try to entice him, and then it dove out and low, and he wasn't ever really going to get any bad on that. Well, I guess he did get a foul tip. Right fielder Kyler Galmore. Haven't got him out in this game either. Singled up to the, or rather through the left side. First time up, stranded first. Walked and scored the second time. Outside, 1-0. Wind in the delivery. That misses away also 2-0 to Galmore. Haynes on deck, LeBlanc in the hole, but there are two outs. Nobody bored. Swing and a miss, 2-1. Most of what we've seen from the Timberwolves today has been very good, except for the fourth inning in the field. They've got seven hits, and three of them came in that fourth inning. Here's a 2-1. Inside. Almost hit him. Already had five guys, both teams combined, hit by pitches today. Try a little something here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on the pitcher, batter, catcher area. On the ground to third and into left field. Rushing over with a triad. It was Ethan Becker. Couldn't get there. So a two-out single into left for Kyler Galmore. Here's Tim Haynes, third baseman. DH in the first game. Didn't get a hit. Doesn't have a hit in this game. Lined out to Swift at short. Reached on E3 and scored the second time up. There's a throw to first, nothing doing. That's our third. Somehow Julian can be worked into the Abbott and Costello routine. You got a real, you got a, you got a, the guy at short is swift or something. You know, you got to be able to work that in somehow. That one's in the dirt. 1 0 to Haynes. And in 2 0. As the season goes on, I'll bring for a pregame show or between innings a bunch of different samples of baseball literature through the years. You probably like this one slapped deep to left field, left center, back goes and makes the catch. A great, great run and catch by Christian Pickens to end the inning. So the single is wasted. He was stranded at first. Oh, he dropped it. I was already looking down and marking it off. So the run scores. Yes, I should never look away. Scores from first on the play, Galmore. E8 puts Haynes at second, I guess, looks like. Another run in, still two outs. Six to one. This one over the pitcher's head. Garcia from the knee, but not soon enough to get him. So an infield single for Bryce LeBlanc. His first hit of the day. Moves Haynes to third. Michael Smosner, the catcher, struck out and popped out to short. He's the one with a sky high, the mile high fly to Swift. It barely made him move.
swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Well, I stood up to change the mojo and nothing changed, so I'm going to sit back down. Can't really put my headset on backward. Swung on and fouled. The right side is most. Oh and two. Fouled in the plate area. Still 0 2. I think I'm going to keep this zoomed in on the uh, batter, pitcher, catcher combination here. You can see that a lot better, see the pitches and all that better. And I'll just tell you about the ball on the field. Do that anyway, so. Time called. Smosen steps out. I think we're starting out the season better than last year. I only see one burned out light on a light pole out in the outfield. It was about four last year. Swung on and lifted to center. Back he goes, back he goes, falls down. Does he have the glove? Yes, he does. Had a drop on a running catch back into his right earlier, but that one straight back towards the 370 sign. Nice job by Christian Pickens coming up with it. But the damage is done. There is an, a run on two hits and an error. Now trailing 6-1. to one. We'll be back. So, film girls, do, do you all get to choose which program you help in the spring, or you get assigned some? What? Do you get to choose which program you're helping in the spring? Or do, yeah. Or do you just get assigned? You're going to do baseball. You're going to do softball. It's just baseball. There's only baseball. Well, there's softball. There's, you know, track. They don't need anything from you? No. Okay. That works. We're glad to have you here. Cedar Park trailing 6-1 now. Going to the bottom of the fifth. 8-9-1 due in the order. Here's center fielder Christian Pickens. How many times in baseball history does somebody make a tremendous defensive play to end the inning and they lead off when they come back to the dugout at the plate? Well, that's happening for Christian Pickens right now. Struck out swinging in an 0-2 pitch in the second to end the second. That's his only previous at-bat in this game. This one, a high tapper to short. Comes on and goes over. Not in time. Pickens with great speed just beats it out. That thing was bounced so high, probably 20 feet in the air. Tapped it right off the hard dirt in front of the plate. Didn't come down to right in front of the feet of the shortstop who ran up to get it. And while that thing was that high in the air, Christian Pickens just legged it out for an infield single. Good defensive play, good offensive play. Bottom of the order with a nine-hole hitter. Third baseman Ethan Becker grounded out to third first time up. Pass ball misses 1-0. and oh. Here comes the big rally. 
two in this inning, two in the sixth, two in the seventh, and we win. Hard line drive. It's going to fall fair in right field. Rounding second and taking third is Pickens. Will they send him? No. Good shot. Two hits in the first two at-bats here in the bottom of the fifth. Pickens goes first to third on the play. Becker with the stand-up double to right. Top of the order with Houston Molinaro, the left fielder. And he'll go down and talk with Coach Williams. This is not a conference call by Williams. The uh, pitching coach or head coach has come out to talk to Caden Klein. 0 for 2 start here, giving up two hits to start the bottom of the fifth. And they are going to go with a change. We can get the number on that pitcher. Let's see if I can look it up here. Number 10? Yeah, Tanner Spruill. I guess that's Spruill. S-P-R-U-I-E-L. Nah, I'm good. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I know it. Could have sold hot food, yeah. Tanner Spruill, number 10, is the new pitcher warming up. On the mound for Lubbock Cooper. So here's where we are. We're in the bottom of the fifth with no outs. We are at the top of the order with Molinaro. Christian Pickens led off with an infield single to the shortstop area. Ethan Becker followed that with a double to right, pushing Pickens to third. So two runners in scoring position. We could cut that lead from 6-1 to 6-3 with a good shot here. And I'll zoom in on the pitcher so you can watch his throw in motion as he warms up. Back up a little from there. There we go. Lefty. It looks like they're ready to go. We'll back it back out. I wonder if I could get first. No, no I can't get first there. Okay, new hitter for Cedar Park is Brady Richardson at the top of the order from Molinaro. Outside with the fastball. 1-0 to Brady. The pitch, also outside, 2-0 to Richardson. Oh, I looked down. Must have been a balk. I looked down to mark that pitch and write Brady's name in and a runner's cross in the play. So there you go, 6-2. to two. That was Pickens from third and Becker moved to third from second. Now still 2-0 to Richardson. Austin Garcia is scheduled next. It looks like him in the on-deck circle. Back through the middle. It's going to bounce on the bag, and they can't field it. And the run scores 6-3. to three. What an interesting shot. I don't know if I've ever actually seen in all my years of watching and playing and calling baseball a hit go from the bat to land right up against second base and, and get its course altered so that nobody can field it. A lucky shot, but we, we're due some luck. I think Richardson beats that out anyway. So it's Becker who scored, making it 6-3, and we are at Austin Garcia, the two-hole second baseman. 0 for 2 today, a ground out. Two ground outs. That one's outside. 1-0. One Let me update the scoreboard.
Here's the pitch. Swung on and lifted to center. Camping underneath it, making the catch. Kyle Lewis. And that's the first out of the inning. Here's Julian Swift. Shortstop. Hit Bassman and scored in the first. Grounded out to short in the second. And a pickoff attempt. Their fourth. One out. Cut the lead down to 6-3. So plenty of time in this game. We're in the bottom of the fifth. High and in. Snap throw to first. It was in time except for the first baseman being playing several steps closer to home than he should be. If he was at first, it would have been an out. He couldn't reach him from where he caught it. Swung on and taken into left, and the left fielder with a shoestring catch coming on. Richardson retreats to first. It's actually well placed. The guy just kind of had him played. Two down now for Louis Alonzo. Now batting catcher Louis Alonzo. At least it did some damage here in the inning. Got a couple of the runs back. We've given up. Six to three. Oh, that's in the dirt through the catcher. Runner goes to second. Richardson. Count one and zero to Alonzo. And he started out with three hits. Two of those guys have already scored. This is good. I'm like teams showing as they're fighting back here. Comes the 1 0 to Louis Alonzo. Called strike on the inside edge. 1 0 1. Swing and a miss. 1-2 to Louie. A runner in scoring position could make it 6-4. It would really be vital to get him in. 1-2 to Louie Alonzo, though. Two outs already. Outside. They're going to throw to second and in the center field. Round in third, but they put the brakes on him there. So that was their fifth throw to a runner at a base, and they threw it away. The stat is one out of every seven. I've got, it's got to be 2-2 two -two or he'd be out, yeah. <laughs> Richardson's a third. A balk and a run scores. So, guys, is he just not coming set soon enough? Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be what it is. I don't see anything else that looks wrong. So, Richardson scores from third. <laughs> Makes it six to four. Ah. And this one, a little hopper to short and over. And caught. But Cedar Park scores three, sending six guys to the plate. First three guys with hits, the last three guys with outs. But all three guys who got aboard scored. So we are through five complete. Narrowed the lead from 6-1 to 6-4. We'll be right back.
Back to the action now. New pitcher for Cedar Park. New catcher as well. Logan Vokes on the mound. And Carter Wohl behind the plate. You see them warming up right there. 6-4 now. Of course, the other end of winning this game is not just scoring runs, but keeping them from scoring runs. They'll have to adjust to a new pitcher. They've got two at-bats left. So do we. We're about to go to the top of the six, and they are at the top of the order with center fielder Kyle Lewis. Lewis in this in the last game was hitless. In this game, he was over two until his last at-bat when he got a two-RBI single through the left side. Nobody on now for the two RBIs, and hopefully he's out of singles. So here we go. Top six, center fielder Kyle Lewis. High and in, 1-0. Oh. Again, two games scheduled for tomorrow, but the weatherman says probably not. It's supposed to rain all day, but we'll see. If they play, one or both of them will bring the broadcast to you. They'll be from right here, and this was lifted high and deep, but foul to the left side. 1-1. Oh, one. We're going to be playing all over the Round Rock area, and I think there was a game in Leander and all that, and the, all the scrambling to reschedule all this gave us four home games. Okay. That works. I guess I should turn my phone off. There's a call. Strike two, one and two. and fire. Swing. Bouncer to short. Julian with a nice play, but is it in time? No. It was a kind of a slow bouncer to short. He was playing back a little. Had to really run up on it. Lewis beat it out for an infield single. Now Ethan, Guerrero. Ethan Guerrero, second baseman. One for two. One for three trips. He was a hit batsman and forced out at third. Had a two RBI single through the left side and was stranded at second and he grounded out to third. Bunt, foul, third base side. Owen one to Guerrero. I I want you all to email me at bradrco at aol.com and tell me whether you like this close-in view that concentrates mostly on the pitcher and the plate area, the hitter and catcher, or if you like it pulled back so you can see, although it's kind of small, see some of the defensive plays too, at least see first and third and everything that happens in the infield. bradrco at aol.com. Tell me which way you'd like it. Another throw to first, nothing doing. That is our fourth. Runners on his way from first. There's a throw down. It hits the mound and slows it down by popping it up in the air. Well, just held on to it a fraction too long. So Lewis is at second. Pitch was a ball. One and one to count. No outs. miss. That one was in the dirt actually, one and two. So is this a new hat, Grayson? It's, it's not Mol you or Molinaro's hat through football season, I know. Inside. Two 
2-2 the count to Ethan Guerrero. Need and need and need an out. Another run is in scoring position at second with no out. Hits him in the kneecap. Well, now we can get an inning-ending triple play. D.H. Kyler Jordan scheduled. And that's him. Flight out to right, singled to left, and struck out. I want a hard one hopper. Right at the third baseman that starts a triple play to end the inning. Yeah, guy Jordan doesn't look like a, a big runner. I got time to go to the bag and to second and to first. It's called strike one. In the air, right field. Back goes the second baseman. On comes the right fielder, and he makes the catch about 20 feet behind the edge of the grass. Everybody stays put, one down. Now we can have a more possible inning ending double play. Now batting left fielder, Cutter Douglas. Here's Cutter Douglas, the left fielder. He had the home run in his first at bat of this game. That's his only hit of the day. He is one for seven. Let's have something more like those other six. Oh, look at that bend down into the strike zone. That was a nice pitch. 0-1. Oh, Swing and a miss 0-2. Oh, this could be a huge strikeout if they could get it. They have got to keep any runs from crossing the rest of the way. You're curious, we're at 5, 6, 7 in the order when we get to the plate. Davis, Harvey, and Robinson scheduled. Popped up, left side, foul territory, chasing at the third baseman, but it lands about a foot or so onto the roof of the third base dugout. Still 0-2. Ethan Becker gave chase. He's not in the cards that time. Here's the pitch outside with a fastball, 1-2. <laughs> the one two swung on and drifted to the gap in right center can he get to it no it's going to fall in one run will score another runner is going to be at third RBI double for Cutter Douglas to lead now back up to three runs. Now batting shortstop, it's Kyle Lewis scoring from second on that play. Seven to four. Five hitter, shortstop Jude Cook. All strike. The 0-1. Ooh, a nice one. Strike two.
The 0-2. Make it 0-3. Wish could have had that in the last batter. batter. Two down for right fielder Kyler Galmore. Calls time and backs out. Two down, one run in. Runners at second and third. A hit here is a disaster. A passed ball is a disaster. Outside, 2-0. As many people here as are here for a normal non-district game when it's 68 degrees. Mm, I thought he was going to call that one, but no, 3-0 and o to Galmore. Of course, again, if you load it, you can end the inning at any base on the next batter. Who is hitless in this game. And that's what we're going to have to hope for because there's a four-pitch walk of Galmore. So Galmore at first, Cutter Douglas at second, Ethan Guerrero at third, two outs for Tim Haynes, third baseman. Hitless today in three trips, but he has reached twice on an error and scored a run. Swing and a miss, that's more like it. The 0-1. Ooh, look at him call that one. Oh, two. Let's whiff him. On the ground to short. Julian Swift to second to end the inning. So Haynes, fielder's choices it. Tyler Galmore is forced out on the 6-4 at the bag at 2. But it did score a run. The leadoff guy had an infield single. He came around to score. Stretched their lead by a run to 7-4. and four. We'll be right back. Couple of changes in the field as we go to the bottom of the sixth for the Cooper Pirates of Lubbock. New pitcher is Damian Cantoya. New catcher is Connor Sanderson. And for the Timberwolves, five, six, and seven do in the order, leading off right fielder Cade Davis. Single to right was stranded at first. Reached on E5 was stranded at second. Cedar Park has stranded one, two, three guys in scoring position so far in this game. 1-0 to Davis. How many has Cooper stranded in scoring position? One, two, three, four. 
That one misses 2-0. This one's taken to center, but the center fielder had him played short and runs up and makes the catch. So a line out to Kyle Lewis for Cade Davis. First baseman Jackson Harvey steps in. You know, we've had a lot of well-struck balls today. And it's just gone at people. That's baseball. On the ground towards the second baseman. Gets it, bobbles it, picks it back up. At second base, you got time to do that. Throws him out at first. Ethan Guerrero to Bryce LeBlanc for the 4-3. Now batting designated hitter number 16, Murray Robinson. Quickly two outs with nobody on. Our chances are dwindling. Here's Murray Robinson. Over two, ground out to second, a fly out to center. First one misses, 1-0. On the plus side, it's only 422, and there's only an inning to go. That one misses 2 and 0. We will have Coach up here for the post-game show. So give him a minute or two to talk to his team, then he'll be up here. So don't walk away right after the game's over, win or lose. That one misses 3 and 0. Called strike one. Christian Pickens on deck. Ethan Becker after him. And then we're back at the top of the order. Cedar Park needs runs. No outs to work with here with two away. And Murray's aboard. Will they run for him? Doesn't look like they will. Brooks Dillman will bat for Pickens. I'm a little surprised not running for Big Murr. I like the organ music. That's a nice touch. <laughs> you all can't hear it, but playing organ music out in the stands. Called strike one to Dillman. The left side foul. 0 oh 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Becker is scheduled after Dillman, and he is in the on deck circle. And he hit him. On an 0 2 pitch with two outs, he hits him. Dillman to first, Robinson to second. Tie and run comes to the plate. With two outs, Ethan Becker is that batter. He grounded out to third, and he doubled to right and scored. Double to right would be another good thing to do. Might well make it a one-run game if he can do that. 1-0 to Ethan Becker. They have given a lot of shots a ride today. We have not. We're putting it in play, but anything that we've hit hard, we've hit it right at somebody. Two and a, three and a. I'm going to walk here to load the bases and get to the top of the order. 
put the tying run aboard. Yeah, who is that on deck? Okay, okay. Looks like Molinaro is on deck. And he'll come up. A four-pitch walk here with two outs. Well, they got the first two guys out lickety-split in just four pitches. Since then, everybody's reached base. Robinson is now at third. Dillman at second. Becker at first. Top of the order. Back to Houston Molinaro, who started at the top of the order. Time out for a conference. So interesting. Well, you, one thing about two outs is you, you just run it on any contact. You don't have to worry about being doubled up. In a certain sense, that makes that part of it a little easier, but you got to get that hit. New pitcher. Looks like a, is that a 17? I... I think it is. Okay. They're going to do what, Adam? Oh, that's your suggestion? So who do we got? We got Houston and then Austin Garcia and Swift. Maybe Vaughn for Garcia? You got other people you can put in second base. Yeah, that would be an interesting move. So to recap, seven to four, our score. We're in the bottom of the sixth of a seven inning game. First two batters in this inning got out. A line out and a ground out to second. Then a walk, and he's at third. A hit batsman, he's at second. Another walk, he's at first. We've done it without a hit. Now batting number 22, Houston Molinaro. Top of the order, Houston Molinaro. He is one for two today, or not today, one for two in this game. Grounded out to third and single to right. Stranded at second that time. No more stranding. That one's outside. A walk will work too. First batter that Tim Haynes has faced. Righty. Swing and a miss. That was going to be inside. Let that go. One one. Fouled back against the screen. One, two. Remember, after the game, there's going to be a few minutes of silence while I compile some stats and we wait for Coach to come up. Then we'll talk with Coach after the game. And he'll probably bring a guest with him. I two and two, some player he thinks made a big difference in this game. Or game one. Check swing, but he rings him up. Should have gone ahead and completed the swing. So Cedar Park leaves the bases loaded. The go-ahead run was at the plate. And we struck out. We'll be back in a minute.
Okay, here we go to the top of the seventh now. 8-9-1 due for the Pirates. Here's first baseman Bryce LeBlanc. One for three on the day today. Oh, looks like we got him lifted for Skyler White. First piss pitch to White misses one and oh. Swing and a miss, one and one. Cedar Park somehow got to get the bases loaded again in this next inning and give up nothing right here. There's a pitch. One, two. Outside 22. Been outscored by them today by one run. Two run win in the first after a late two run homer. Erased a 4 nothing shutout margin. Down three here, 7 to 4. Oh, there you go. Got him looking. Great pitch by Logan Vokes. One down. Michael Smoson, the catcher, is scheduled. Or Sanderson. Yeah, he was lifted by Sanderson. Connor Sanderson's the new catcher. Wrote it on my defensive chart, but not my batting order. Pitch from Vokes. A little outside. comes the 1-0 from Logan Vokes. Swing and a miss. 1-1. One, one. Oh, look at that. That was really nice. 1-2 the count to Connor Sanderson. One out, nobody on. Two, 2 Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, looky there. What a nice pitch. Two standing strikeouts for Logan Vokes at the bottom of the order. Two outs, nobody on. Top of the order now, Kyle Lewis. Now center fielder Kyle Lewis. Lewis started out over the day until his last two at-bats are both singles. And it's a high sky ball to left field. Underneath it, makes the catch. Inning over. Last chance for the Timberwolves when we come back.
All right, here we go. Last chance for the Timberwolves in this game. Unless they score three. <laughs> if they score less than three or more than three, it's over. We are at two, three, and four in the order. Here's the second baseman, Garcia. He is over three today. Grounded out to second. Grounded out to first. Fly out to center. And there is at, though, the right fielder. Another time when we struck the ball well, that lined it at somebody, one down. Here's Swift, shortstop, hit batsman and scored, grounded out to short, lined out to left. Got a lot of L's on the score sheet. On the ground to the second baseman, down on it and over. In time, two pitches, two outs, and here is our very last chance, Louis Alonzo. Now batting for the Timberwolves, number seven, Carter Wall. Oh, Carter Wall, excuse me, yeah, Wall's been replaced Alonzo a couple innings ago. Thirty-seven degrees out there right now. They're asking to see if he went. They're saying he did. That one's inside and he didn't go. One on one to Carter. Okay, Davis on deck, Harvey in the hole, and then we'll see Robinson and Dillman and Becker and win the game. Swing and a miss. One, two. A strike away now for Tim Haynes. Pick up the save here. Down three, seven to four. Here it is. And there it was. Three up, three down on only one, two, three, four, five, six pitches in the seventh. Coach won't be happy about that. Timberwolves fall. They did stage a nice comeback. It fell short, seven to four. They go to two and one. We're going to go away for a minute. Don't you go away because in four to five minutes or so, Coach will be here and he'll bring uh, a player who had a good day with him. We'll be back.
Stand by. Coach will be headed this way in a minute. We'll talk about this game, about the first game. He'll bring some players with him, maybe players, at least a player. And we'll also talk about the possibilities for tomorrow, which are still kind of uncertain. Still a couple minutes away, though. All right, Cedar Park head coach Lanny Williams joining us now on the post-game show. Two games to talk about, Coach. Uh, a, a win earlier, 4-2, to two, and a loss uh, later, 7-4. to four. I guess let's start with the first one. Uh, Timberwolves looked pretty good in the field, on the mound, and, and you know, got a few it, runs in. It was in. good, man. We, we talked to, to our guys. We know whenever whenever Adam Vaughn is on the, on the uh, mound, uh, we have a really good chance to win the ball game, and, and I think our guys play that way. I uh, think that, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, he, he pitched a pretty spotless game. And, you know, the last inning just came up there. We, I think we made an error behind him. And, and then all of a sudden he gives up a two-run homer. And it, I think it kind of ticked him off and he kind of kind of got it going then. So, yeah, it was uh, a nice last inning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, you know, very, very proud of that. We saw in the bats well, uh, which, I, you know, I think is the strength of our team. We're not, we're not as fast as we were last year. Uh, you know, when you got Big Murray in there and, and, big, <laughs> and big Jackson Harvey in there also, uh, we're not as fast, but uh, we're, 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 I think, very athletic, and I think we, we, do a, we do a great job of really giving ourselves an opportunity to, uh, to score some runs. Yeah, we had uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten base runners in that yeah. first game yeah. and, and just six at-bats. Uh, that's not bad getting people on. Right. Um, in the second game, uh, a little lesser – Thing going on. We, we had a big inning we gave up with them. They let off the well, home run, but the big inning really was the fourth. Well, and, th and that was the thing. We, we, you know, we. I think the first two guys got on. I'm not sure if they got a hit or how they got on, but with, they're going to bunt. And, and the, our rule is when they bunt, get an out. Well, we don't get an out. And if you play it, if you play play that situation, if we get an out with a bunt, the next guy strikes out, the next guy pops out, and we're out of the inning with no runs given up. Well, because we don't get the out, we load the bases up, and we go, I think, pop out, strike out. Or strike out, pop out. Now, next thing you know, we yep. hit, hit a ball and and, uh, and you know, a couple of singles. Yep. Yeah, you know, and, and it's just this opens the floodgates. But but that's you know, it's baseball, it's high school baseball, yeah. it's it's professional baseball, and it's it cold. Happens. Yeah, it's cold. I mean, these fingers. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, right. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to use that for an excuse. <laughs> uh, it was cold for them also. And you're that's right. True. It is cold, but but uh, but still, the plays that you know, I feel like we we should have made. You know, we we should have made those, but. Uh, I was very, very happy with our, our the effort of our guys. I was very, very happy with even the last inning. I think the uh, the fifth inning of the um, the second game. You know, there was a lot of fight that I saw that our guys had, and we yeah. came back, back in the sixth inning, load the bases. Scored three up, there, yeah. yeah. Load the bases up, and um, you know, have an opportunity to maybe punch one or two more in, uh, and we didn't. But but uh, but I was very, very happy that they didn't just you know lay down uh, and just not really. Fight. But yeah. that's what tournaments are for. Uh, that, that's what this opportunity is for. It's about trying to figure out who you guys are and, and trying to figure out, uh, you know, what your team's made of and just trying to put those pieces of the puzzle together. I'm, I'm like you. You know, I would have been disappointed if we let that lead stretch up and right, we lose 7-1 right. to one or right, something. Right. But just the fact of coming back and making a game of it right. there late, yeah, that shows – a lot of drive, a lot of fire. Good things and, are going to happen. And that's the kind of guys that I feel like we, we do have, you know, uh, on our team. A lot of these guys, you know, last year were, you know, other than, gosh, I think four guys, four or five guys, uh, you know, a lot of these guys were playing JV, JV baseball last year. But um, they their understanding of the, the baseball side of things, uh, I think every day is, you know, the learning uh, – we're learning them, you know. We're trying to figure out who they are as well, and, and just trying to tap into that as coaches uh, also. But uh, they, they come every day to the ballpark, you know, with with a great attitude, and, and, and um, you know, just we're happy about that. So can't, can't complain. 
Yeah, what about Cade David? I think he's like five for ten now yeah, to start he's, out his he's career. Well, man, I, I, we get, we got some uh, some sophomores that, that we're pretty excited about. Um, you know, as a as a as a as a baseball program, and I think you know they're they're very very solid. Um, you know, and, and Cade and, and, and Brady and, and Carter's in there. You know, tonight, you know, today, get, getting a chance to to catch a little bit. So there's some guys that we're excited about as sophomores, and, and really, you know, uh, I think a lot of times what sophomores have that the older guys is, don't have is just they don't have experience, so they don't know any better. And so I'm just hoping that maybe Cade will just they'll they'll all just stay that way. They don't know any better, but you know, sometimes. You know, guys can outthink themselves when it comes to the game of baseball, and, and that yeah. kind of hurts them, uh, especially the older guys. But uh, but I'm, I'm happy with them, and, and very very pleased with with their efforts and their attitudes, and and just coming in here, and really jumping along, and just really getting on board with that. All right, well, thanks, Coach, for joining us here on the post game show. Head Coach hey, Lanny Williams, the Timberwolves. I, I got to apologize to you for being warmer than you for the last That's five right, hours. You, you're smart. <laughs> I mean, you, you came in here and got the you came in here and got the got the press box before Mister Mister Wall did. So you you would text me like, "Hey, where's the key?" Of course, so, I did see the two nice heaters. Yeah, in the oh yeah, yeah, Those yeah, were yeah nice. man. Our booster club has done a good job, and, and and I really mean that. Our parents are phenomenal, uh, and I'm not saying that just to be saying that, but I mean, I mean. They take care of our kids, man, and uh, they're gonna, you know, get us a charter bus next weekend, put us in a nice hotel, and uh, and um, you know, get hopefully get a chance to go the next weekend and play uh, play some good ball. Tomorrow we're supposed to play San Antonio. Yeah, so um, talk about possibilities. I know the weatherman is gonna rain all day. If it rains, Brad, I'm not gonna be out here, man. You can come out here and call whatever you <laughs> want to call, but uh, I've already said we've kind of told our guys, man, if if it. If, and I don't know, you know, what the weather's like. You guys are probably watching a lot better than I am now, but but I'm, I'm not. I don't mind doing this. Today was, I would say, pleasant. It was, it was not pleasant. It was okay, but I don't want a mixture with rain. And, and really, there's no reason to come out of here with anybody uh, and, and try to get a game in or two in uh, based on that. So I, I've already told, you know, the, the directors have said, hey, we don't mind the day, but if there's any moisture in the air, we're, we're probably going to be out on that. And so, uh, and we're fine with that. Um, we, we feel good about it. So if, if there isn't any and we can play two games, who would the opponents be? San Antonio tomorrow. We will play a doubleheader against San Antonio Brandeis. Okay. And uh, what Brandeis. were the two times? It's the same, same time. Same 12, 30, today. and 3. Well, yep. there you have it, folks. 12, 30, and 3. Yep. Okay, thanks right. a lot for joining hey, us, thank Coach. Thank you, guys, man. Appreciate hey, it. Coach Lanny Williams of the Cedar Park Timberwolves here on the post-game show. All right, well, you heard it all right there. Cedar Park 1-1 on the day, 2-1 and one on the season. Nice win over the Cooper Pirates, a very good program in game one. They dropped one in game two, but that's baseball, as Coach said. Two games possibly tomorrow against San Antonio Brandeis. The same scheduled starting times, 12.30 and 3 o'clock. We'll bring them to you if they play them. And it looks like it's going to be cold enough to be back in the press box again. So <laughs> that's the name of that tune. So until then, Brad Cohn, voice of the Timberwolves, signing off. We'll see you next time.